Hey guys, Ronnie B, buybokeway.com, doing the boys experiment with Big Andy Schlegel. Hope all's going well tonight. I just want to touch base today was our fourth uh, heavy duty workout, a leg workout again, or predominantly focused on the legs. And we did the superset with the leg extensions first, going into some type of squat movement, or we used the leg sled. And then after that, uh, a standing calf raise. We used a type of hammer sled where uh, you basically had your hips and butt into a seat, but uh, it was very similar to a standing calf raise. Uh, it, was, it was pretty intense. Then we, of course, finished off with the sit-ups. To start the workout, I was doing some warm-ups. I warmed up on the leg sled initially uh, with not much weight, but right off the bat, I started to get an amazing pump. And this is really bizarre, and I talked about this on the last workout last week, at, week um, where I was noticing doing the warm-ups and doing the actual set more of a pump than I noticed on our first two workouts. I almost feel like my body is acclimating to this type of workout style or maybe you know this type of intensity or frequency duration. I'm, I'm not quite sure what it is specifically, but I do know something's changing. So uh, today we start doing the leg sled and, and right off the bat I start to get extremely pumped in my legs, almost to the point of a very awkward walking around. Went to the leg extension after my legs were warmed up thoroughly and began performing my reps. I chose a little bit heavier weight today and on the next workout I may stay with the weight I was at today because uh, in the high intensity training, the Mike Mentor Weight book, he suggests that you do 12 to 20 repetitions at the slow cadence for your legs and today I, I hit 12 reps. It was either 11 or 12 and that was absolute failure so it wasn't a completion of that final rep. It was. Uh, hitting the wall and coming to a dead stop. But right from the get-go, um, the weight felt light, but to keep that super slow cadence, my whole body, my legs were shaking like crazy. It was pretty awesome. Um, it wasn't that it was heavy right off the bat, it's just, man, that cadence, it just, it gets me every time. After doing the first couple reps, in my mind I started saying that I need a lot more weight. I can put more weight on here and I, I just kept going through it and it was a good thing I didn't because I, I like I said I got to 12 when when you know I should have been able to get to maybe 20 reps and at 20 reps you'd increase the weight so so all went well getting off the leg extension after that first working set to failure I was exhausted uh, my hearing it sounded like somebody turned the volume down I was dazed and confused slightly lightheaded I limped over to the leg press, which seemed, I don't know, maybe 50 feet from the leg extension. I'm not sure how far it was, but after you blast your quads like that, it was a journey. And they had stairs, you know, just three or four, but, you know, every little extra step to get that leg sled just wasn't, wasn't working at that point. I jumped on the leg sled, and again, the first couple reps, the, the weight that I had loaded the leg sled with, you know, could be called a warm-up weight easily. It was very light. But again, first two, three reps, I was thinking in my head, man, I need more weight. I almost was going to shout to Big Andy to throw some more plates on there. But I thought in my head, well, I'll just keep going, and if I end up doing too many reps, I'll just increase the next time. And by the time I hit fourth or fifth rep, my, my whole mindset changed. I started, to, uh, the burning sensation in my legs was so great. I just wanted to stop and pause, and and that's the one thing we've tried to avoid with all these uh, with all these uh, workouts and repetitions is no pause anywhere, just constant moving. Even though it's slow, it's under constant tension, going back and forth, back and forth. And so I kept going, and I don't know how I did. I remember thinking on the fifth rep, there's no way I'd get it because my legs were just on fire, and they felt like they're incapable of pushing anymore. But for some reason, every time that leg sled would come all the way to the bottom. And I'd start pushing with everything I had, just slowly go up all the way to the top, and then I'd bring it all the way back down, and I would think, oh, I'm not going to make it, and I'd just go all the way back up real slow, real hard. It was everything that I uh, I could do to, to get the leg sled back, back up. And then it seems like towards about rep 10, 11, 12 is where I failed, failed in the bottom position, which is what I really enjoy about those leg sleds is that you can go to absolute muscular failure and just step out of it. it you know, the, the leg sled will hit its stops and then won't come any further. And you know, then right after that we went, we had a little rest, uh, you know, got the calf machine ready. And by the time I started doing the calf machine, my quads were still just pumped, so pumped I couldn't even flex them. Uh, it, it was just amazing. I could barely walk around. And yet 
going into the calves, I, I got that same burning and same pain sensation that I had in my quads doing the leg extensions and then supersetting with the leg press. But it, it seems like the calves are such a small muscle that even with that exact same pain, there was so much less of it, maybe less surface area, I don't know, but it, it just wasn't significant. I mean, the pain was there, definitely, and I was well aware of it, and it was extreme. But I didn't care. I just said, oh, it's, it's just pain. It's just a little tiny bit of pain in my calves, you know, my the whole entire calf. And it was so easy to just keep going. It's funny how doing the, the leg sled, the pain was just... Uh, it was definitely something that would stop you psychologically. It, it was definitely a, a motivating factor to stop going, even though I didn't. I kept going until the legs quit. But man, the psychology between the two different muscle groups, it, it's impressive. It just shows uh, there's a threshold. You get too much of that, that pain, that lactic acid buildup, that muscle soreness. You get too much and the, the, the sensations the brain starts sending, the signals the brain starts sending, just so much stronger, so much greater. And then something interesting happened on the sit-ups. Last time I did the sit-ups, I used one plate on my chest uh, for about uh, nine to 10 reps. It seems like the failure rep was 10. And I thought going into this, I would do better. You would think I would do better. And I was doing the reps and I, I was exhausted right away, but a couple things were different. I felt like I had the, the plate up higher on my chest, like touching my chin more firmly. And so, of course, there would be a greater moment arm generated if the weight's further from the, uh, the pivot point. So uh, uh, it would be a stronger leverage to work against. So there is that. I possibly was creating more work for myself. But also, on my last rep, the 10th rep, as I started to go up, I mean, I just hit an absolute dead spot. I couldn't even budge it. But I, my traps, my shoulders, everything had just all of a sudden got at a really extreme pain. It just went through the whole area. Not a bad pain. It was a pain as if I was flexing those muscles as hard as they could contract. And so I went back down and I got the weight off and I finished the set. But I think what, it, what was happening is probably from the fatigue, I might have just been squeezing everything as hard as I could, even holding on to that weight, just you know, getting tighter and tighter with each rep. I know that I've done that in other circumstances with my, my palms, just you keep squeezing on the bar harder and harder as you get fatigued, and so this could have been the same thing. So when I do the next leg workout where we have the, uh, the abdominal work, I will try and uh, you know, stay focused on being extremely relaxed. So, But all in all, good workout, the diet's going good. Uh, my body weight today was, I think it was 189, maybe 190. but. Remember, I ate all that junk food yesterday from the UFC fight, so I'm going to scale back the calories slightly and try and watch the, the fat a little bit better for the next few days because <clears throat> I feel like my skin might be a little bit thicker. So eating all that, that fat and junk food, you know, especially yesterday, and then I've had a higher fat diet all the last week, so I might scale it down just a little bit to make sure we're on track with body fat. But So again, body weight's up, strength is up, we saw on pretty much every movement there was a strength increase uh, and next workout workout number five we're gonna be repeating the first workout workout number one and we'll be using all the same equipment so we'll know for certain what the increases were we'll be using the Nautilus pullover we'll be using a, a, the same pull down machine de deadlifts on a platform <clears throat> so it'll be really good to hit that workout and see precisely what increases uh, we've gained uh, you know numerically weight wise from just a total of uh, four workouts, really. So anyway, I hope all's going well for you guys. Uh, thanks for checking in, and we'll see you on the next one.